it's not easy. It's dangerous. It hasn't been done before. But these are the sorts of things that capture people's imaginations. Let's talk about the future of space exploration. Hey, John, come in, John. Can you hear me? I can read you loud and clear, Grant. Excellent. Hey, everybody, this is John Thornton. He's the CEO of Astrobotic. So, John, can you tell me a little bit about Astrobotic? Sure. Astrobotic is a lunar logistics company. So we, we think of ourselves like a, a FedEx or UPS to the moon. Uh, we take packages from around the world, we bolt them up on our lander, which is our delivery truck, and we drop them off on destinations on the moon and on the sur uh, all the way down to the surface. Uh, it's our goal to, to make the moon accessible to the world, uh, and we're doing that by, by enabling access to, to the moon. All right, so you deliver packages to the moon. Who would be your clients? Well, there's only been three nations that have ever landed on the surface of the moon. The, the U.S., the Soviet Union, and, and just recently China. Uh, so our goal is to make it possible for every nation around the world to land on the moon and have their Apollo moment. Uh, so it's international space agencies, it's international uh, corporations around the world, it's actually uh, marketing possibilities as well for, for customers around the world. Um, so our goal is to make it accessible. Uh, we're starting with space agencies and, and large corporations. Uh, one day we'd like to make it possible for individuals to fly to the moon. And through a, a, a pilot program called Moon Mail, that's actually possible today. Individuals can spend a few hundred dollars to send a small memento to the surface of the moon uh, and that way they can be forever uh, connected with, with the moon. All right, so I've heard a little bit about your Griffin lander, but can you tell me a little bit more, more about it and, and the technology involved? Sure, the Griffin lander is our delivery system. It, this is a 10 foot by 10 foot propulsive vehicle that flies into space on a Falcon 9 launch vehicle from Florida. Uh, the launch vehicle is 200 foot tall, 1 million pound force thrust, and it throws 2,500 kilograms towards the surface of the moon. Uh, and that mass is our lander, and that, that carries fuel, uh, and it's our delivery truck to carry packages from around the world to the moon. Uh, it's a propulsive vehicle because there's no atmosphere on the moon. We have to use rockets to land down on the surface, uh, and we do a nice soft landing on any, any location on the moon. What do you think about colonizing the moon? I mean, do you see someday having a, a moon base alpha? Yeah, someday we, we do imagine that the moon could be colonized. Uh, what we're looking into right now on our first mission is a destination called Lacus Mortis. Uh, it translates to Lake of Death, but the reason that we go there is that there's a very unique feature called a skylight there. Uh, and it's thought that if you can get to the bottom of one of these skylights that it could be an entrance to a cave underneath the surface of the moon. So if we can find a cave, uh, we can use it for shelter for people, much like people settled here on Earth in caves first. Um, so there's, we're starting to put together the pieces of, of what might be necessary for, for future human settlements even now. Uh, so one day we, we do think that that will happen. Uh, and it might happen sooner than we think. Um, here's a basic question, why the moon? Why did you choose the moon as, as your uh, platform for, for delivering things, as your goal? So the moon is our nearest neighbor. Uh, if we're ever going to get to Mars and, and become a multi-planet species, we need to start in our backyard, which is the moon. Uh, the moon is, is where we need to learn to live off the land, where we need to learn to settle, where we need to learn uh, to use the resources uh, that are there. Um, so there, there's a, just a ton that we need to understand and figure out about people living off Earth uh, on another planetary body, and the moon is the right natural step. Um, and the other is that there's just a tremendous amount of backlog demand to fly to the surface of the moon. And we've, we've seen this internationally with um, everything from space agencies, corporations, uh, even education outfits, um, and individuals that, that all want and, and yearn to go to the moon. Uh, so it really is a, a, a perfect natural stepping stone and the right next place for, for people to go. Let's talk about uh, the future of exploration, space exploration. Where do you see that going? Well, one of the biggest things that's happening in space exploration today is that the cost to get to space is coming down dramatically. What used to cost $10,000 per pound today costs on order of $1,000 per pound. So that's one-tenth of the cost of what it used to be to fly to space. And that is enabling a whole new uh, a community in space and a whole lot of new technologies that are, that are coming on online. 
Uh, it's leading to revolutions in, uh, in Earth observation and science. Um, think like real-time Google Maps uh, and, and real-time disaster uh, reconnaissance and, and, and uh, feedback. Uh, it's also enabling companies like ours to uh, open up new destinations beyond Earth. Uh, and ultimately, it's that accessibility of getting to space that is really uh, revolutionizing and opening up new frontiers. Now, what do you think about Mars? Will there be astrobotic deliveries to the surface of Mars someday? So someday we, we do, uh, we would like to go to Mars someday, um, but right now we're focused on the moon. That's, that's the, the near term uh, outcome, that, that's what we see the most demand in. Um, we, we need to learn as a species, as humanity, to live and operate on the moon first, uh, and then we can set our sights on, on Mars. Um, but one day we, we very well could be landing regular payload deliveries on, on Mars. Now, what sort of technologies did you have to develop in order to make this service possible? So there's a whole array of, of technologies that, that are necessary to land on the surface of the moon. We're at, at our core, we're a space robotics company, which is a very important uh, aspect of it because it's an, an autonomous vehicle that can land and f uh, fly towards the moon. Um, so it needs to know where it is in space. It needs to navigate uh, hazards on, on the way down to, for a soft landing on the surface. Um, so we use a combination of, of radar, stereo cameras, uh, a laser, uh, and, and uh, an inertial measurement unit, and, and some cutting edge uh, computing technology that combines all those sensors uh, and then can take, make accurate estimations of where the lander is at any given time uh, and ensure a safe landing down on the surface. Um, so there's a tremendous amount of technology that goes into that. Um, however, over the last 30 and 40 years of, of uh, space exploration, a lot of that technology is now available um, so that you can go and buy it and, and just get it right off the shelf. Um, so, so we're really a, a systems integrator. We, we bring these technologies together uh, and then we put some very cutting edge uh, software and robotics technology on top of that uh, that makes our lander uh, very smart and fully autonomous in, in landing down on the surface. Now, you must realize that this sounds a little bit like the stuff of science fiction. It's hard enough to get a drone here on Earth to deliver packages or tacos or, or donuts or whatever. Um, and you're talking about essentially doing a drone that autonomously lands on, on the moon. I mean, that's, that's a pretty huge step. Yes, it's, it's a big challenge, um, but, but like all great ideas, uh, they start in science fiction, and that, that's where it's a, it's a crazy idea, and it's science fiction, and then it becomes more real. Uh, you start to actually work towards it, it becomes less of a crazy idea, and hey, maybe we can actually get this done. And then once it happens, it's, oh, how, why haven't we been doing this all along? Um, so th this, this is possible because of major breakthroughs in, in technology. Uh, our team, we have our, our CTO uh, came from the DARPA Urban Challenge, which is racing autonomous cars uh, through the streets. Uh, so we're, we're taking that same kind of technology and, and putting it on board our lander. Uh, and, you, and drone landings happen every day here on Earth, uh, but they do rely on GPS. So that they, the GPS gives them X, Y, and Z coordinates uh, relative to Earth. Uh, when we go to the moon, we're creating a new system that can, uh, that can locate the lander as it's coming down towards the surface without GPS. That's awesome. All right, so speaking of science fiction, big question, Star Wars or Star Trek? <laughs> Well, I have to say I'm, I'm a big Star Wars fan. Uh, I, I, I think the, my, my timing uh, just ended up being that, uh, that, that Star Wars was the, was the movies that I watched and, and got, I got, got into it when I was a kid. Awesome. Well, thanks a lot for your time, John. Thank you, Grant. Signing off. We'd also like to thank our sponsors who helped make this episode possible. Microsemi, Vichet, and Phoenix Contact.